so I'm here with uh, Kenny, the Black Dynamo MMA. He's got a fight coming up at Bellator soon. We're going to go through his career from the start until now. So first of all, I want to thank you for your time and coming here today. Um, we're in UC Fit, Lucan. Um, when did you start in MMA and why did you start? Um, I started about 10 years ago now. I was probably I was like 15, 16. Um, What's it, like I always was surrounded by fighting. My brother's been fighting way, way before me. So um, he brought me up to boxing, and I just, I kind of just took the piss. I didn't really like, like, um, like it, or didn't like the hard work, and I just messed around. So um, um, obviously, when he the UFC wasn't around when I was like eight years old, that's when he was doing boxing. But fast forward up till I'm like fifteen, that's when um, I took an interest in like UFC. And then, um, like the build up, I just loved it and all. So, France started his amateur career, and then um, he had a few amateur fights. So, I was like, let me try this scene. And I could never get up to SBG because um, it was too far, too expensive, and things like that. So, um, I, my friend in, in my school, um, James Smith, um, he brought me up to CMAC. He was training there, he's a judo black belt. So, I, um, I went with him to train CMAC. Um, Kept on showing up, didn't take the piss because France's France's biggest concern was that I would take the piss in SBG and not like train. But like I, I told myself I'm gonna not I'm gonna take this serious and then I'm gonna train hard in it. And then I went to CMAC, trained hard, found a good coach, found good coaches and good teammates, and then had a long amateur career and like fast forward here I am. Basically, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, CMAC has, at the minute they're actually thriving as well. So that was a good place to get your base. So you basically got the base of uh, your skills and your skill set there, and then obviously you moved on. So when you started your amateur career, obviously you said you went in, you weren't taking the piss, you were taking it seriously, unlike the boxing that you'd done a couple of yeah. years ago. So like obviously with your brother being in it and you wanted, you obviously wanted to compete. Tell us what it was like coming up to just say your your amateur debut and. Like you'd got the training in, how ready did you feel? What did it feel like the week before you had that, that fight, the amateur one? Yeah, so um, yeah, from the minute I got to see uh, CMAC, I wanted to, uh, my, my whole goal was to fight. So um, I worked towards that. Um, I'd done some Jiu Jitsu competitions, I'd done K1 um, before I actually done MMA. And um, yeah, I just basically waited till. Um, and my coach at the time told me I was ready, and then and when he thought I was ready, I, I would do the, do the amateur fights, and um, that's what I did. Perfect. And then, like, what was it like going into the fight? So was there any nerves? Was there excitement? Was there a mix of both, like, coming up to the fight week? Like, how did it, how did it feel at the time? Yeah, like, in amateur, I feel like most people feel different. Everyone's level is different. You see some people are ready to go pro after three fights, four fights and, and then they look good in pro professional, sometimes they go too early. Some people have to wait 18 fights like myself to go, go pro, so me, I was, it took me a long time to get uh, comfortable in um, the cage and um, especially at amateur, it took me at least 10 fights to stop getting like, I used to get panic attacks before my fights and stuff like that, seriously. Like, and um, almost to the point where my coach was, like, want, <laughs> was about to pull me out of the fight. Before, like, like I'm at the venue and, and I'm having like panic attacks, mini like panic attacks. So um, yeah, it took me a, a long while to um, to get my head together and um, to not throw away fights doing stupid things. And that's just where the experience came in, and that's why I I personally needed um, the 18 amateur MMA fights. That's mad that you're actually having panic attacks. And when did that kind of stop over time? Like. Was it when you, like you said, when you got to 10 fights, you got a bit more comfortable? Was it, was it more you needed to get used to not only fighting and the skill sets, but everything that kind of comes with it? I know, like, obviously, the, the, the local shows aren't as big as, as what you're fighting on now when, with Bellator, but there's still, like, a process in that day of having to go, hand wrap, wait. Was it more of a case of getting used to that? Is that what happened over time? You just got more used to showing up and doing it. Is that what stopped the panic attacks, or do you still get them? Um, I think... The, like, I think my, just my change in mentality and, and things like that changed, I feel like, as well, um, as much, 10 times, I, I feel like 10 MMA amateur fights is still a lot of fights, you know what I mean? So, um, I think just to change the mentality and switch the mentality like that, it's, it's okay to be nervous and um, just take it as, like, 
I'm, I'm, I know I'm gonna get the nervous and just enjoy it. And um, and and it was, wasn't a part of um, the sport that I focus on. And I feel like the nerves and and that part of controlling that part of the fight, I feel like that's a martial art in itself. Just like you're learning how to manage your jiu jitsu, clinch, wrestling, everything like that. I feel like your um, mentality is another um, important, one of the most important things. Yeah, people tend to overlook that. I think that is the, I think it's Chad Sonner, someone says that, that it's like, it's huge. Like, like he, I think he says 70 or 8% mental. Like if you don't have the mentality for it, then like no matter what skill set you have, it's not going to go. So you, yeah. you fought on so many promotions as amateur. Like I said, you had the 18 fights and, and how does it feel as an amateur fighter to have that many options? Because if you look at lads in your gym as, like the, the older guys, they had very few amateur fights before they went pro. What was it like to have that many options available to you? Yeah, it was good. Obviously, um, my, my um, like I come from, I came from an all amateur gym, so it wasn't, it wasn't like, like you almost felt like who, who, do you, who do you think you are trying to even ask to go pro? You know, you yeah. know what I'm gonna say? So, um, even when I was thinking about going pro, I had to like I had to convince my coach as well. I felt like I had to convince my coach, not just myself, that I'm ready to go pro. So. At that point of 10 fights, I should be, most people are already looking at pro, going pro, so I kind of wasn't, but at the stage where I'm like, my coach is seeing me have panic attacks, I need to stop, I need to stop having panic attacks before I, I ask him, um, can I go pro, you know, or to even put it in his mind that I'm ready, so I had to prove to almost my coach that I'm, I'm ready to go pro, and, and that, that would, uh, uh, that itself will change your mentality and like, fuck it, I'm, re I'm gonna, even if I'm nervous, fuck it, I'm gonna go. Do you know what I mean? And I think that just that mentality just changed um, my perspective, and it and it helped my performances as well. I feel like, yeah, because obviously over time you get better and better, and, and you had all those eighteen fights within within all those eighteen fights. Is there any fights in particular that stand out here, like your favorite? Obviously, you're known for your submissions. Yes. Um, yeah, obviously with your pro career, you, you've, you've all finished this, but is there any fight in amateur that you felt one? Well, actually, one or two fights. One that you learn something from that really kind of changed, like change your mentality or anything like that? Do you know, one that you learned a lot from and then maybe one, one of your favorite finishes from amateur. Is there any fights that spring to mind? Yeah, I feel like the point where, I actually remember the fight where um, I, would, I told myself, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna have a panic attack and I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna get nervous or let them show any weakness. I think it was the, the first John Mitchell fight I had. Um, and at that point, I was like, it was like I had like 13, 12 fights. And th at that point there was, no, there was no one left for me to fight in the country. So I went up weight and I fought welterweight at that time, which um, I'm fighting the best, other best uh, fighter in the country. And um, in that fight, that fight I, had to, I was the underdog obviously. So um, I'm going in there, I have to use good, I have to have, good, have to have a good mentality, you know what I'm trying to say? So, and in that fight we were in, um, Funny enough, we were in the same like um, locker room or same change room. He's warming up like here, I'm warming up over there. Like you know, you know what I'm trying to say. So there's no way I'm gonna start on a panic attack, and he's right there. You know what I'm trying to say. So um, <laughs> I think that was the, the first fight that I was like, I felt like I felt nervous, but I'm like, I can't show him that I'm nervous as well. And then I remember Dino came up to me. He was like, um, he's like, what, oh, Kenny? Why? What's wrong with you? How come you're not getting nervous yet? He was like, what's going on? He's like, I'm like, I'm like, shut up, shut up, you might hear. You know what I mean? So I feel like since that day, I was like, I feel like that was the hard. That was like as hard as that was the most uncomfortable it could be before you actually go out to a fight. You know, he's watching you warm up. He's watching what you're doing. So um, I feel like since then, everything else has been easy and um, smooth. So um, yeah, I feel like yeah, I'm coming into myself now and. Um, I'm happy that I've experienced all that, so I know that um, in the future, I feel like I can handle any any pressure. Like you know, named the black diamond. Obviously, pressure makes diamonds. I've dealt with so much pressure that like it's no, it's nothing to me. Like you know. Yeah, no, I like how you got the nickname, and you have to go through that. And and it's good that you went through that in amateur. That it wasn't happening when you're going into pro, obviously. Yeah. So because like if you look at the start of your pro career now, how it's taken off, and and how you've been up there on those stages and doing what you're doing is incredible. So obviously what you done in the amateur scene was quite good. Like, so you're talking about, you went up uh, up to, up a higher weight. So, cause you wanted to fight the best. So like in terms of, obviously you didn't have to cut weight for that one. Like, what's it like weight cutting 
And is there more pressure now when you've gone to pro to get the weight down? Do you feel more nervous doing it? What's it like doing a weight cut? Just for people who might not understand. Funny enough, um, my weight cuts are, I wouldn't say they're um, easier. They're, they're definitely still hard. But um, my last few times, I feel like, like, actually, let me go back. Actually, before, before an amateur, when I was cutting weight, I would just starve myself for two days. And, um, <laughs> and that's, that's probably sounds crazy to a lot of people that um, know what they're doing, but I'd starve myself fast for two days at a time and just stay in bed. And um, I wouldn't let water load, I wouldn't eat any, any food, any calories. Um, I do a keto diet the, 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 up, up to the fight till, um, till um, the two days before I fast. And um, yeah, I'd just be in bed, like I uh, like couldn't move, you know what I say? So right now, the day before the weigh-ins, I'm eating, I'm eating foods and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, not, even, I'm not even hungry, I'm just, I'm just more worried about the weight, you know what I mean? But, um, it's not easy, obviously I'm in the saunas and couldn't wait, but I'm not even hungry because I'm still eating, I'm still, um, you know, I'm still eating and, that, and that's, I feel like I'm doing it, I'm still I'm doing it right now, but at the same time I'm still learning as I go. Do you have a nutritionist on board with you or do you do it yourself or do you do it off the advice of your teammates? Yeah, I've, um, so in, I, I, used the, I didn't use a nutritionist last Bellator, um, I made weight myself. And I had a I had a good um I had a good system where I went off um similar to the UAE fight. And um I done it myself but it's still like me doing it myself. But this time I have someone, I have a, a coach TJ, um he's doing a wake up with me and um I feel like I know what I can do. I can, I know I can make it myself but it's just taking that that part of um, the fight out of my hands. I don't. Ha I just have to worry about the fight. Just think about the fight. I can still eat, and then um, yeah, we go from there. It's much much healthier, and it's a it's a small price to pay for um, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do. You know. Yeah, because sorry, like that. You've so many things going on with your training, this, that, the other. Obviously, you've media obligations, stuff like that coming up to fight. If you can take different facets of that off your off your own plate and give it to someone else to handle, and they just basically give you a list what you need to eat obviously yeah. that takes a lot of stress off you which obviously would help your performance and you're not mad because i've talked to a lot of fighters and like that they said they used to starve themselves like yeah. literally it's, it's probably one of the worst things you can do yeah. how did you feel then going into the fight after starving yourself did like did you feel weak did you feel like um i didn't i didn't know any difference so i just thought that's how you in the fight i didn't really feel weak but because um, if it was the same day of the fight the way in I'm lucky I had 20 hours to like rehydrate, even though I didn't, didn't rehydrate. I would say I didn't rehydrate properly, but I don't feel like I properly rehydrated at all, you know? Like, right now I'm, I'm drinking shakes, like, um, I don't, like, other, like, sorry, I'm, right now I'm drinking, like, shakes, like, and I'm sipping them, like, good rehydration shakes and stuff like that, and um, I'm drinking six liters of that before I get to the food and things. And there's a process leading up to the food to, um, to refuel your body and then um, like recover, recover your body, you know. But back in the day, I'd just go to the to the shops, chicken roll straight away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, there's um, there's actually a process to this, and I'm gonna keep getting better at the process as well. It's, um, there's levels to the process as well, you know. Yeah, like fighting. There's levels to everything, and obviously you've learned from that. And you're going on, you're taking out your own hands, obviously, again, this time, yeah. putting it in someone else's hands. So, like, throughout your, you had, like, an outstanding amateur career. You'd fought on so many different promotions. You go, obviously, I want to talk about, you went to SBG. Obviously, you went from CMAC. Uh, you still a good relationship with them, I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, what made the change? Was it because Franz was there? And then, obviously, when you look at SBG, they're, like, the premier gym, let's say, because they have all these, these pro fighters. What was the reason for going there? Was it to to be with your brother and to f train with these other fighters? Yeah, there's a few things, obviously. Um, yeah, it's a great gym, C-Mac. I still, I still try to go back um, from time to time, but um, I feel like, um, yeah, obviously speaking to my brother and, um, and I then they, um, my brother brought me to the SBG. I talked to Dave, Dave's plan. He told me the plan and um, it, just, it just got to the point where it just kind of, my schedule, I have a schedule now and it's kind of hard to juggle back and forth, you know what I mean? So I just had to pick um, SBG. So um, 
Um, yeah, CMAX still a great gym. I have a good relations to them. But um, yeah, for pros, for pros, I think um, it was the right um, step to make because I'm. I feel like from being like the probably the most like after Alex, I'm the after Alex, I'm probably the most experienced fighter in the gym. To right now, I feel like. I'm just like yeah, you're the back, new guy. yeah. I'm at, I'm the new guy. I'm back at the bottom, and like I'm just another pro fighter on the team. You know what I'm trying to say? So um, I've, I'm I'm still learning a lot about the game. Even though I have a lot of amateur fights, professional the professional game is a lot different than um, I'm like, like I'm, uh, I've learned a lot of things that I like I would never think of before. You know that you need for the for the pro scene as well. So um, yeah, both two great gyms, and um, yeah, SBG. Um, yeah, I'm trying to there now. They're, they're my primary, my primarily, they're my dream. So, um, yeah, so yeah, I'm doing well. So, um, yeah, it was the, obviously the right decision in it. So, yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> I don't, it's hard to say without like dissing, like, I don't yeah. want to diss you because, um, obviously, CMAX is a great gym, and I, I'm obviously, the things I learned there, I'm still doing now. I'm just adding little things, tweaking things in my game, but. The things I've I've learned at CMAC, I'm still I'm still um doing now and um, um the things I've learned at CMAC are um like um prices to me what I've learned you know yeah they they, they essentially created the base of they they created the base of your fight yeah. who it was and then you're just tweaking things as you go along with SBG so um, when you were talking about how different it was between the amateur game and the pro game, so talk to us about your pro debut. It was on Clan Wars, I believe, Adam Shelley, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so tell us what it was like going out to make that pro. That, did it feel different? Did the, did the fight week feel different? Did the being in there feel different? What was it like compared to amateur? Now, for me, the Shelley fight, um, obviously, I felt like there was more on the line because, um, obviously, Dave, not, Dave was telling me before my... Um, pro debut. The plan was to work towards Bellator, get two, three wins, and then get onto Bellator. So I knew that I had to show them something in that fight. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So um, yeah, the Shelley fight um, in there just felt like you know, like the same as my amateur fights. The only thing that I felt different was the gloves. That's the only thing I felt different in there personally. Yeah. And then obviously you had the the longer rounds, but I don't think that came into yeah, a factor. I don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't think that was a factor for you in the yeah. actual fight, though. Um, so then you go from there. You fought on UA. So so talk to us about a couple of your pro fights. Like, was there anything different? Was there anything that stands out? Here? What was it like fighting for UAE Warriors? What was it like going over and, and having that experience? Yeah, it was it was it was a great um, it was a great experience. Obviously, um, staying in like. The hotels and things like that it was nice going to go and traveling and things um but um yeah in the fight it just felt felt the exact same other than yeah it felt the exact same actually <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say i was in a big arena and stuff but once you're in the cage amateur pro you're still a cage referee there him there you're the here you fight the same thing i feel like so like when you're in the fight let's say and obviously you're saying whether it's a big arena or it's here there the other so once, once that cage door shuts and you're standing there and you're face to face with your opponent, does everything just drown out? It's just you, him, the ref, just and then, then just your, uh, what you can hear from your corner. Is that all, like the crowd and all fades out for you? Is that what it's like when yeah. you go in a fight? The crowd fades out for me, everything fades out for me, um, just me and him. And um, I can hear my corner, that's, that's the only thing I would kind of be looking out for to hear. That. Other than that, it's, I feel like it's just the same. Yeah, so what's it like having the likes of John and Dave in your corner in a fight? Like, how, how, not, not how much do you rely on them, but obviously they see it from a different point of view. So when you're getting shouted instructions at, like, like how, how beneficial is it? Well, obviously it's beneficial, but like, how does it feel to have those two in your corner, being able to oversee what's going on, things that you can't see? Yeah, it's good. Um, no, it's funny actually. I don't want to come like uh, I'm like yeah, I'm big myself, but like I haven't. I've barely been to the corner, so maybe if I'm in a three round fight, like it will make a difference. But I feel like it hasn't. I haven't felt it. You know, what I, mean? I haven't felt the difference. The Shelley fight made it to the second round, but like um, that that was kind of it was felt the same because we do simulated rounds all the time, so um. In, um, they, sometimes Dave's in one fighter's corner that we're doing our sparring and then John's in the other um, training partner's corner. So it just, it just felt like that, to be honest. But um, I haven't really been in the corner where like, I'm in trouble or something in a fight. So um, 
maybe then I might have a different answer for you. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll revisit that then when it comes yeah. along, because um, like that, you've finished all of them. So, uh, but at Bellator, talk to us about what it was like at Bellator. Obviously, you said the crowd drowns out once you're in the cage, but what was it like walking out to that crowd in at Bellator? Yeah, I kind of, um, I kind of trained it drowned out there as well. I didn't look, I didn't look around. That's why when after after the fight, I was like, oh my god, this is a bad thing. Yeah, that's why I, I kind of like it was overwhelming for me because that's when I kind of realized that you know what I mean. That wow, like I'm like this is Belter, this is um, the Tree Arena, this is um, like John McCarthy, everything. The crowd's mad and that. So like till that till that, I didn't. Um, I kind of rinsed it out. Do you think if you had to try to take that all in, it might have affected, not affect your performance, but affect your mentality going in? Do you think it might have put more pressure on you? Or do you think, did you drown it out purposely or was it just you were so focused on fighting? Just so focused, yeah. I don't know what would have happened. I don't know if I, if I looked around, but I just, just felt, I just felt like, nah, let me just focus on um, the fight. And then after, obviously, you gave that interview, like you said, what, like, well, tell us what that release is like. Once you finish the fight, you've won. You're standing there, like I said, beside Big John McCarthy, who is an absolute legend yeah. in, in MMA. He, like he goes back through years from UFC to refing everywhere to being part of Bellator now. Like standing beside someone like that, looking out at that crowd because I know you're from Blanche and you get a good crowd going to these fights as well. Yeah. What like what was that release like? Once the fight's over, you've won. You're standing there beside him. You're looking out. Like what kind of a feeling is that? Like for for as a human being as well. Like you know. It must be like an amazing feeling to look out and see that, see your friends, family, yeah. and be talking to him. Yeah, as much as everyone says the tree arena is mad and they're crazy, they actually are. And then I didn't think that um, I'd actually have that reception, even though I knew I'm the hometown town guy. I just didn't, I didn't expect, I still didn't expect it. So when, when obviously. When obviously I hear the crowd and all going like mad, like my ears, like <laughs> you know what I mean, like uh, so uh, yeah, it felt mad. I was just on adrenaline. Even when I woke up the next day, I was still on like like I was, like I was still mad, you know. I was still on like fight. I feel like I was still on like fight adrenaline like the day before, and I never felt that before. That's cool. It must have been an amazing feeling. Then obviously it brings us to now. You've a couple more fights coming. You, you've you've a fight coming up, and you've a couple more with Bellator. So you're coming up. You're you're coming up against a guy. Um, he's three and four, I believe, but he's still got seven fights, whereas you've only have four. So he's bringing into that experience. When you're going into a fight, right? So like, do you let John and Dave prepare for the tactics for the fight, or do you look at the fighter uh, yourself and have a look, or do they do all the kind of technical? Game planning. Yeah, so when Bellator sent me the contract with your man's name, I looked up, I obviously, I looked up his topology and then I had a quick glance at him. Um, other than that, I didn't, um, I didn't, um, I didn't look too deeply into him, like what he does, this, this, this. I know he has a good Peruvian necktie and that. Other than that, like, I don't really like, um, like to focus too much on it because um, I feel like one time I've done that, um, uh, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna say, uh, see the Mitchell fight, yeah. I looked at him, I'm like, ah, this guy has no power, do you get me? And then I went into that fight, like thinking, like, I can get hit by this guy. I got hit here, and like that, that, that one punch fucked me up for the whole fight. So um, since then, I don't look too deeply. I know everyone has the same patterns in their fight. Some little things will might change, but everyone has the same patterns when they're under pressure. They go back to what they know, you know. So um. But primarily, I like to just focus on me and let my coaches do that because either I'm gonna overlook them or I'm gonna give them too much respect. I feel like so I look, have a little glance, take it for what it is, and then I go from there and yeah, work on my game. Yeah, just basically see what their good basics are, what they're good at, and, yeah. and not like that. You said you can overlook them or you can give them too much respect, and then so if you like, if there's amateurs coming up, would you tell them if they're going into a fight to focus on themselves and try and and mold themselves as a fighter as opposed to look at other people and trying to stuff their stuff the opponent's attacks, let's say. Um, it depends, like, because I try not to be, I, I'm not really a coach either, so um, I just take the, just listen to your coach because everyone's different. Some people that will work for, some people that might not work for, some people might, it might be better for them to study their opponent heavily if they they throw a jab and they I don't know they flinch I don't know they flinch this direction or that direction other people it might be just better just if they if they're a proper overthinker it might not be um 
might not be good to look at. It just depends on like the person and their personality, you know. Yeah, perfect. And like you said, always listen to your coaches' advice because they know yeah. what, what's best for you going forward. So you're coming up, you're going to be in uh, the tree arena again. So it's going to be another stand ovation. I'm predicting another KO fit or another uh, stoppage. Sorry, so stoppage finish. So um, I'm going to let you go. But it, we're good. I'm going to ask you one question before I let you go. With, like once you're finished fighting, is there anything you want people to remember you by for your legacy, let's say? And it doesn't have to be just as a fighter. It could be as a person. Um... Yeah, I just want to be. I want to be a world champion in in this game. So um, that's that's the goal. Like I feel like anything else, I'd just be wasting my time um, dedicating. Like I feel like dedicate. Like this game, this is my life. You know what I mean. This is my job. This is what I do every day, twice a day. This is all I think about. So if if I'm not if I'm not trying to reach the top, like I feel like I'm just wasting my own time and um, my family's time and everything I'm sacrificing. So I want to be a world champion. I want to be the best. And um, that's my goal, yeah, and I want to be able to obviously take care of my family and things and make more than a living with this. So, um, yeah, get back, reap, my, reap, um, reap the words. And um, I've been at this for a long time, so I want to get something back out of this. I didn't go to college. I don't have anything else I do, so this is all I have. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the goal, just world champion and be the best in the world. Perfect. Well, if you can continue on the trajectory that you're on, that's what's eventually going to yeah. happen. And I reckon a couple more nice finishes in Bellator, I reckon you'd be going towards a title shot, in my opinion. So um, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute Cheers. pleasure. Thank you, bro. Thank you.